Hello, do you feel like a pile of trash? Are you completely alone in the universe? Do you feel like the days are just going by and you never make any progress? Do you still have nothing to show after years of work? Meet Gerald McWilliams. He's just like you. He's just like me. He is me. Today in Project Zomboid, we're going to cheese three stats. This character is extremely capable, but I have a really good plan. Trust me. Well, we found three boxes of shotgun shells and a shotgun in the last video, so I figure it would be it would be a crime to not train our aiming as well as our light-footed and our sneaking. There's a trick for stat farming that's been around in this game for quite some time. And I'm about to show it to you. Last time we found this new base, the Rusty Rifle, in the snowstorm. We're going to need to get very far away from the Rusty Rifle, for it's very safe here. We don't want I, what I'm about to do to be anywhere near the Rusty Rifle. Here we are. Now we've found a lot of zombies. They're still too close, though. We'll start calling them out. We have to yell at them. Now, this only works, mind you, since we've got the first level and a half or so of sneaking. We'll just make our way over to the diner. Keep attracting their attention in the snowstorm. This is great, we've got a lot of them now. Now, because of the snowstorm, I'm going to attract a lot of them due to the sound. However, they won't be able to see me because the sight lines are horrible from the snow, so we're gonna do something very, very keen. Now, first off, I want you to look at my aiming, as well as my light-footed and my sneaking stats right now. Okay, keep a good, take a good look at that. Now we're just going to reload the shotgun. It's not going to help us a lot with the aim, but it'll help us more with the sneaking. So we're going to just aim in the shotgun, and then there, shoot and run away. That's how this is going to go. Now this works well because we're very good at light-footed and sneaking, but watch what happens when I go into the woods here. Since none of them can detect me, I'm rapidly gaining skill levels in this. It may not seem like much right now, but all I need to do is attract a few more with a few more shots. This is dangerous, but as long as we just keep darting in and out of the tree line and avoiding all of them, they should keep getting attracted to the sound of my weapon while I escape on foot. What's beautiful here is is that I sneak faster than they walk. Some of this, and some of this, and here come the levels. Already one level of aiming. Here we are, one, and oop, two, three, four, five. That's another level of aiming. There it is, aiming level three. Here we are, this is a completely legitimate way to level your sneaking and aiming. Just keep, just keep reloading. Here we are, we'll just keep kiting them, Call of Duty style, and begin again. There we are now, it's uh, oh this is beginning to look it's like swimming. It's really- it's just like swimming is all. And we can just run back into the woods. We can never come back to these woods for about a month. But that's how it works. We can go back out and level the sneaking next. My god, this game is so beautiful. Especially in the snow. There we are, back up with the levels again. Okay, now it's time to get out. I gotta beat it. Fortunately, this time has been productive, to say the very least. Another, another, again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And believe it or not, that should be enough for four levels of aiming. Hardly any work. All shotgun. But in the words of Bill Burr, it's got a really good spread. One, two, three, four, five. One level of reloading. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. There. 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 They just- oh my god. I had zoomed out in so long. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is the perfect way to pull a train. It's like the Daryl Dixon move from The Walking Dead. And they try to clear out the dam. We'll probably be able to manage level 5 in aiming. And again. There. 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 And last shell. There it is. Now, unfortunately, that's all we got, but we made almost half our levels of aiming. I think we've attracted every single zombie from the entire town, uh, and we should be able to make light-footed and sneaking level 4 by the time we get back. And I'm thirsty. We're gonna sneak it back through the woods and see if we can gain those last levels of sneaking. Though it is dangerous. I think that we've spread them out enough that the danger is cleared. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I underestimated the number of zombies out in the woods. But if we just get far enough from the road, we're completely safe again. So that's level 3 in light-footed. That's level 3 in sneaking. And that's enough. I picked up a few nicer items of clothing and I'm insulated again. And it looks like the gas station is cleared out from all that shotgun fire. It might actually be a rare opportunity at looting here. There's one. One. Wow, it's totally clear. For now, we can just disassemble the soda machines. That's pretty good electronics experience. And it gets us closer on our way to hot wiring cars. Got more food. That's always valuable. An empty gas can. A great find. More pop. 
And just more desserts. And it looks like they took it down enough entrances for more metalworking skill. The back room has even more and more, as well as a propane tank. I'll just take everything and think about it later. Now there's even more materials here. I'm gonna remove the broken glass because I have a lot of work to do here at the gas station. It's my plan to make this place defensible. Or if we can find a generator, we'll be able to power these things up and get unlimited gasoline. From there, it's just a matter of getting all the cars back in the world. Cars can be used as walls or any number of other defenses. That's the reason why I chose the rusty rifle as a base. This one has a key. I'm in luck. All I need is gas and the pumps are still working. Well, two empty gas cans and a car with a battery that works. We'll just run up to the pump and take some fuel out. Bring over the fuel and pour it into the car. Just pour it in. So we'll get back in and start forming a car wall around this place. I'm gonna take every single vehicle I can find and wall in these pumps. I like this coat. And this one we also add to the car wall. We've got some more company. Cars means guests. Especially when there's a lot of noise. And we don't really need these cars either. So that means more fighting. Action turns. And I just heard one of the wheels give out. That is a sure sign of... Yeah, but it's time to get out of this car. We're just gonna park this over here. I've already got some company. Well, it's fine for now. We'll make our way back to the rusty rifle and we'll continue building this up. Suddenly, I look like a member of the real world. And I am tired. I like this already. I found a cot to sleep in. That's badass. That's badass. Uh, while the lights are on, there's still a lot of hope. Let's eat some junk food and think for a while. We have tools. And behold, now as I walk in a circle and gain the next level of sneaking. There really is a crazy amount of power leveling to be done in this game. And since sneak levels are a positive feedback loop, the more experience we have, the more we're liable to get. Same goes for every other trait. As in real life, you learn by doing. So I do this. From there, it's just rinse and repeat. Do you like shortcuts? Do you feel like you've been spending most of your life running and hiding? Well now, just by walking in a circle, you can avoid ever being seen again. That's uh, actually how I intend to do this. It's a little bit AFK, but I'm just going to get the next level of light-footed and sneaking through this mechanism. We'll just keep a comfortable distance from all of the zombies, and then whenever one wanders over, we just gain more experience. Before you know it, voila. Short blunt level three. Coming up on light-footed level four. Ah, magnum. Double holster. Nightstick. And keeping a comfortable distance from any danger. Sure, maybe it takes a couple of hours, but that's enough for sneaking level four, for light-footed level four. To say the least, I am surprised by the number of revolvers I've found. Just wish I had better use of them here. I think now we have enough skill to walk through a crowd without attracting most of them though. Obviously we still need to draw them from the station, but now we can make our way back through these bodies. We've got back the signature look. And already, after only just a few days, we've already developed half a full bar in three of our major stats. Well, the truth is that we've got enough weight on our bones that we have plenty of time to spare. I think I'll just spend the next couple days walking through fields so that I up my light footed to level five. We can get a half a full bar if I just spend the next day or two wandering through back alleys. Here comes the helicopter event. Fortunately, this happened during my sneaking time, so they shouldn't come back to my house. Does it make me feel safer? No, but you gotta look on the positive side. And we're also really close to reaching those next levels. We just gotta break sight lines and wait until this helicopter event ends. And here we are, just about there, light-footed level five. And in a moment, we should reach sneaking level five. There we are. Sneaking level five. I'll admit it's taken a lot, but I'm legitimately curious if we could become a, like a shroud in the city. I've never had the luxury of being unknown. Well, this place is swarmed again, but I do have a plan B, and it's a good thing I saved this. Here we are. I don't really plan to retake this area, but just sleep somewhere it's safer. South of Muldra, it should be quiet again. That horde should have dispersed by now and gone back to urban areas. I was right. Remember how many there were just a few minutes ago? Should actually be safe to sleep in my car. We've got away for now. And we're well on our way to the next levels of light-footed and sneaking. Though I really don't see much appreciable good from this until we max out on our levels. I'll have an easy time getting mediocre, but then real mastery. That's a greater journey. Well, this is my life, living in a van down by the river. Except I don't have a van, and there's no river. There isn't even anything. Guess I'll go to sleep now. I'm not even- I'm not even tired enough to sleep either. Well, there is still one thing we can do. Better to be thirsty 
empty in the woods. And when you run out of skills to grind, you can always just forage in the woods. I wonder how this will work, because technically we're in July, so we might get July kinds of foraging, but it's also, you know, it's winter. It's very cold out. Oh, we have berries. All right, it's time for a poison berry taste test. We have many berries, many of them. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a pain. Well, under normal circumstances, you have to test the berries, but since we have all of the traits, especially the herbalist one, we know that the yellow berry this time happens to be the poison one. Uh, poison berries are actually edible. You can put them in a salad and it makes the salad, according to the game, more fun. We don't even need to eat worms. Wow, what a luxury. What a privilege. Oh, seeing as we don't have a bowl, we could just eat berries on the side of the road. A wonder- isn't it a wonderful life we live? Eating hundred- tens of berries in a car. Let's just put the worms on the seat next to us and this chipped stone and these tree branches and all this other junk. All kinds of different foods. And look, we've already gained half of the next skill in foraging. Wonderful. Now sleep will overtake me and in the morning I rise in the fog. Nice to see that we've had some weather variation, but the weather is always consistently cold. Or, you know, just something forlorn. Well, plenty of zombie bodies to examine for more clothing and items. Watches to dismantle. Enemies to fight. And an opportunity to begin upon what might be the most legitimately overpowered skill tree. That of spears. But oh, they break a lot. Uh, I may have done something wrong. Time for one last exodus out of town. Everyone, come here, move along, nothing to see here. Here we are, I'm just going to have to play Moses in Egypt again. I'm going to spare you the car horn for a while. Ooh, that is an axe. If I could just run him over, that would be nice. There we are, nothing to see here. Move along. And now we just tap the accelerator for a few minutes. There we are, now we just drive back through the horrible mess that we've... Uh, you know, on second thought, that will not work. That was really close, though. Okay, so what I meant to say was abandon the car on the side of the road and run into the woods. And fortunately, this will actually let us practice our stealth again. We have to stay quiet and steer clear of the road at all times, for these woods are gonna be overrun soon. But if you go far enough around, you should be safe. Oh, we've successfully managed to keep them off from the uh, gas station now. Each little car is another day's worth of work, you know? But that's what it takes, Lego brick by Lego brick. Eventually, you can clear out locations in this fashion. Now we have only two left to fight in the parking lot. Uh, make that like six. It's not quite that good, but it's still good. It's a matter of getting them into small enough groups and just having enough spears that you never run out. More spears, more death. And that's spears level one. Really, a lot of effort just to get to a car with the door locked too. We'll smash the window, make our way in, and there is no key. This is what Project Zomboid is about. Going to a lot of effort for a minor gain, but our home is safe again. Uh, few new residents, but my newfound stealth will help me. We're gaming windows, and overall, I'd say this is a jolly good show. Jolly good. I know I'm not supposed to say jolly good, but it is. That's what it is, so. So I stand by it. Well now, with short blade level two. Well, I've been to the gas station in a car with two wheels. It feels good to get out of the snow. At the gas station, you can't remember your name, but there ain't no one here to give you no pain. I'm driving a car that's missing its front two wheels. Don't ask me how I turn. I turn with my mind. I just wanted to get this red car somewhere that it could actually be useful. Let me just turn with my mind again. And now, there we are. Move along, nothing to see here. Just a car with two wheels. Somehow I'm still moving. That's great, we did actually need that. And now we're one step closer to sealing off the pumps. Well, it seems as if the power's gone out, but it won't be long till we get that power right back on. I'm gonna go ahead and say that getting power back on should be the focus of our, uh, of our endeavors right now. I think we're up by about 15 skill points more than we were at the beginning of this video, so I'd say that that's an accomplishment. Maybe you know how to grind a few more of your stats now. Well, hopefully our lucky trait will give us more skill books, and I'd say that once we have gas and a firm base of operations, then we can start to chill out and grind a bit. But that's a lot of skill grinding. I, I think I've given you a lot more meaning to your life than we started off today. You know, maybe you don't feel like garbage anymore. Maybe... All right, well, I think we're gonna end it there for one day. That's been quite enough. As always, thank you to my patrons. You're all the opposite of garbage, and I am the garbage truck. Hope you you're enjoying the series. My name's Ambiguous Amphibian. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye now.